This is uh, a picture of myself and Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is the founder of the Eastern Congo Initiative. Uh, that is not how I got involved in Congo, but it is my most recent effort, and it's, I must say it's one of the best efforts of all in Congo. Uh, my, I initially became involved in Congo uh, during the Rwandan genocide a long time ago, and uh, I, was, I had the misfortune, but perhaps now the good fortune, I, I look at it now as uh, good came out of bad. Uh, uh, having been there at a time that was terrible, I was working with the refugees that were coming over the border and the, the poor folks that were dying left and right, and uh, I became very passionate about the region, and it was then Zaire, and now, of course, Congo, and, uh, and Ben asked me to join his organization. I know Google is involved with, with the Eastern Congo Initiative, and uh, it is, Ben has been remarkable on this issue, and this organization works primarily uh, solely in Eastern Congo, and we support community-based organizations that are truly making a difference and trying to, you know, we support very small uh, organizations that are African solutions for African problems. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, we're not trying to come in and do uh, do anything, you know, we're not trying to take over, we are trying to support the organizations that will make a difference. Uh, it is, uh, you know, we're working on the rape issue, which is a very difficult problem in that region. There, We're working on, on issues to help uh, children, obviously, uh, the, the health issues, I mean, there's a myriad of things that are going on, but it, it's, uh, the rape issue is one that, that I began with uh, a long time ago, obviously, and it is one that I mean to tell you is, is not only an ongoing problem, but it is, it is an issue that, I, that, it, that uh, the world has ignored. And it is one that, uh, in my opinion, women's organizations around the world has ignored. And uh, I want to, I'm trying to rustle up not only interest in it, but I'm trying to rustle up anger in it. Why, why has the press ignored it? I don't know. I mean, we have women's groups here that, you know, at the, at the, at the and rightfully so, that, that at the flick of a switch get involved, and, I, and they should be involved. But women are, this, the woman in this picture, uh, w was raped the first time at the age of eight years old. She's been raped, I don't know, how, 20, 30, 40 times. She's now 18 years old. Uh, she's had multiple surgeries trying to repair the damage done uh, from those rapes. And, and she is a beautiful human being, and she's, she is a survivor. She is not the only one. She's, you know, this is one of, of hundreds of, of, of thousands of young women who, who have had this, had this done to her. It is, it is something that, that is ongoing, and it's a terrible situation. Uh, in the eastern part of Congo, two, uh, the numbers are horrendous, how many women uh, that this has happened to, young girls, older girls, uh, old women. I mean, it, it, uh, it's something that, that I think the world needs to pay attention to. And I, for some reason, we can't get people in, interested well, in it. When the world pays attention to the Congo, mm -hmm. in the past it hasn't worked out that well. Um, yeah. The United States' involvement in the Congo, we've mm -hmm. extracted resources, we've extracted people, we mm -hmm. possibly helped assassinate Lumumba, and we supported Mobutu for three decades. So why would our involvement now mm -hmm. work? Well, you know, in 2006, uh, Congo had what we co consider a Cadillac of elections. Uh, it was a, it was considered a free and fair election. I believe it was. They elected uh, uh, a president that has, uh, you know, done his job. We are now up against another election. We are hoping it's going to be a free and fair election. Uh, the MINUSCO is not in there in the, in the type of way that it was in 06. Uh, the U.S. is not in there in the, in the type of way that it was in, in 06. Uh, things are not happening the way that it was this time. Um, if, you know, there are things at stake in this country. There are things at stake all over Africa, not just in, in Congo. Um, you know, it, if we don't pay attention to Congo and other parts of Africa, the bad guys will pay attention to what's going on. But can't, can't one make the argument that we're, we're, they're, they're, we have no hope of any place in the world we're not going to be able to understand it's the Congo. I mean, Eastern Congo, we've got, you know, 
who are the good guys there? We have the, the Hutus who came, who killed all the Tutsis, are now in Eastern Congo. We have a president who's uh, been indicted in the International Criminal Court, or a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. I, we're never going to be able, you know, our, we're not going to be able to figure it out, so maybe we should just no. stay away. No, no, they're human beings. I, I, I disagree. I just think that when you have a population from in 25 years that have declined to to absolutely, you know, the, the, most of them now are illiterate and can't read the ballot. I mean, you, you, I just don't think as human beings that we can step back and say, forget it. I, I just can't do that. So I, I just believe that we're better than that. And we're, as, a, as Americans, we're looked to as the beacon. So I just believe that, I, I just can't walk away. So and, let's, <laughs> let's talk about, okay, let's accept that as a premise that we should, yeah, we should I, do things. I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll go with you there. <laughs> We have a lot of people here in this audience who in the next year have pledged to do something good. A lot of them yeah. have run technology companies. Some of them run extremely successful technology companies. If you had a million dollars and a technology and you wanted to do something for Eastern Congo, what would you do? And you wanted it to be on your badge next year. I would look at uh, some, I would take, I would, first of all, I would explore organizations like Eastern Congo Initiative and others that are involved in Africa or in Congo and look at what they do. It, it's, it's not so much, in my opinion, about giving millions of dollars, but it is about looking at small community-based organizations within the region. Um, it, it, again, it's about African solutions for African problems. Um, it, smaller amounts for smaller organizations. Uh, a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, you'd be very surprised at what you can do. Uh, there's, for instance, there's a small organization that we stumbled upon. It's, it's, it's kids running a radio station, and they're getting the, they're getting the message out using Google, using the internet, using, you know, using little bits of things. Uh, information. I'm not. T I'm telling you your business. Uh, information goes a long way, and they are using. Tell, it. tell us more about that radio station. I read about it in your congressional yeah. testimony. It's it's women on air, and it's only women on. It's air, It's only right? women on air, and they're getting the mess. Women are dynamic in Africa. Um, uh, it's it's exciting to see what women do. Rwanda, as you know, has been very successful, and women are a large part of why they have been so successful there. Uh, but women are really the key to success, I believe, in, in this region. And if women can be supported in what they're doing, um, I believe they're going to be able to, to make the change in Africa. And, t and tell me about the way that um, Google Maps has been helpful for, uh, for your uh, work. Oh, I, uh, another speaking organization. Of yeah, speaking of technology, I sit on the board of Halo Trust. And Halo Trust, as you know, demines around the world. We take landmines out of the ground. And they've been very helpful in the work that we do because we don't, we're not very technologically oriented and they've been very helpful in be, being able to demine around the world, being able to layer and being able to, to safely demine and, and without a whole lot of technology. So I want to thank you for that. <laughs> We've been able to, I think, even save lives with it. And in fact, I Twittered about it this morning. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Uh, and speaking again of technology and Rwanda, Rwanda is a, is a great success story. This is a country that was even worse off than the Congo, and yes. now actually there are better cell phone signals than there are in California. It, listen, there's better cell phone signals in Africa than Arizona, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's really remarkable. It and really is, is there similar hope for Congo? If this yeah. room were to decide that it wanted to wire Eastern Congo, could this happen? I paint a bleak picture right now, but I'm very hopeful, I really am. If we, if this election in November, in late November, uh, you know, it, it won't, it's, it, when I say a free and fair election, it, it, you know, it's not as compared to the uh, United States free and fair election. But if we can even get a something that resembles a free and fair election that's violence free, we're, a, we're, we're getting there, we're gonna get, there's hope. And I'm, I, I really have a, a little bit of hope here. So your hope is that this November we have a clean election. Right. It's fair. There's Free no violence. Fair. Right. But again, Somehow it's coordinated in a country where you can't drive from east to west. Exactly. A country that is the size of Alaska and Texas combined. Um, it, it, and we can get the, again, we, right now we do not have the materials out. We do, there is no infrastructure to be able to get the stuff out. We're going to need MINUSCO and some other help getting it out there, but I'm hopeful. We're very hopeful. That so what exactly will you be doing during the election in November? We're going to observe, We've, and mm -hmm. we're, we're going to start in Kinshasa and try to get ourselves across the country and be able to observe and see that hopefully that things are, are moving and that there's no corruption and that there's no, uh, no violence. Uh, so tell me about your own, your own personal transition. You worked with children with cleft palates. You worked with 
you know, young, yes. you know, children who deserve your sympathy. And now you've moved to sort of a more, uh, a, a somewhat darker issue. You've moved to, yeah. you know, to people who are brutally raped non -stop. Is it 70% of women in the Eastern Congo are raped at some point in their life? Mm -hmm. Tell me how, personally, you've psychologically been able to adjust from the, mm -hmm. from the, your, your days being about that to being about this. I think, you know, everyone matures. You, you, every, I think all of you have probably found this. And, and when you start, if something moves you, it, it takes your heart. And you, you progress. You, you move on in your life and something, and it, it grabs you and it takes hold. And for me, that's very true. I started with, with my own daughter who had a cleft palate and, and some other experiences that I had. And then you travel the world and you see different things. You have different experiences. Um, I actually had an experience while I was traveling where I actually had to I put a mother and a child behind me. We're, we were held at gunpoint. This was in Zaire some 20 years ago. Um, we were held at gunpoint, and I realized later on, I don't know how I did this. I don't know how I saved them. I don't know, how, I don't know where I got that from. But, you know, you, you mature, and you have experiences, and, um, you know, you kind of grow up. And I had my own children, too. So it, it's just kind of, I, I think the spirit of a mother takes hold. I don't know. It comes from someplace. And I think, too, having a child go into combat changes you, and that certainly did me. Mm -hmm. So you've been more able to me, handle yes. the stress and more able to yeah, yeah, handle the absolutely. dark side of what you, what you go through. Yeah. So your agenda right now is you would like the reporters here to spend yeah. more time investigating the Eastern Congo? I would. Know? Yes, I would. I'd, I'd, I think, I, I, not to be critical, but just to offer some, some strategic structure, perhaps. Um, I, don't, I, do, I don't see enough commentary on Africa in general. I see a lot of commentary on South Africa and North Africa, but all the rest of Africa I don't see enough, I, I, enough talk about, enough structure, enough commentary on. Um, I, you know, if you really want to get tough, I'd like to see an Africa Bureau. I really would. I'd like to see some talk about the elections in, in Congo and other parts of Central Africa. Um, uh, we just, you know, we wait until there's a huge crisis, you know, and this is the refugee crisis uh, coming out of Somalia to really talk about it. But in the meantime, other things are going on and we don't see it. I'd really like to see more. Do you think we would pay more attention to it if there were some terrorists in eastern Congo? There are. Mm -hmm. There's stuff going on. There's bad an guys are there. There's bad there's guys there. They're there. They're there. Because I mean, during the Cold War, we paid attention because it was communism versus mm -hmm. capitalism. Bad guys are all over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, ju just just because you, you know we hear about them in Somalia, we hear about them in other places, doesn't mean they're not there. They're all over Africa. So, what is the accomplishment that in Eastern Congo that you've been most proud about? The thing that you've helped set up, the thing that you've changed? Oh gosh, I, you know, I'm I'm a very small part of this. I mean, mm -hmm. Ben's been a been a huge guiding light for all of us in in this. I think I think small steps, the the ability to be able to support these these uh, community-based organizations, seeing the women uh, stride forward, seeing the the uh, the hospitals take hold, mm -hmm. seeing the ability to uh, to uh, educate, you know, more organizations, seeing these kids do this radio station. I mean, there's there's progress. And what is your agenda for the government? You what what do you actually you know if Congress were to if you if you controlled all, both houses of both <laughs> Congress and the presidency. What would you? You're, you mean what would here? You do? <laughs> what would you do? Oh, I would really. And what would you not do? I would love to see this administration uh, make a more bold statement about these elections coming up in mm -hmm. Congo. Uh, I would love. I would love to see our own house, both sides, Senate and House. I'd like to see them come and see what's going on in Africa. We we very seldom see Codells go to Africa, you know, north and south they do, but in between they don't. I'd like them to just come and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't, they kind of ignore the central, central part of Africa. Um, uh, I'd like, you know, we don't see them even talk about it, so. And is, should we back a candidate? No, that's not our job. Mm -hmm. Our job is, in my opinion right now, it's not our job to do that. But I think that I think taking an interest in the region and taking an, an interest in what's going on is extremely important because, believe me, some other countries have taken an interest in what's going on. So we should support, uh, support the elections even if they're likely to lead to an outcome. Free and fair like elections are what's most important. Our job, is, in my opinion, is to take a, take a role and an interest in free and fair, violence-free elections, and that's most important. 
Yesterday we had some talk about uh, technologies like bed nets for preventing malaria. Mm -hmm. Are there things that you've seen both that have succeeded and mm -hmm. that you would like more of, of that sort of yes, micro Yes, very important, very important. Bed nets have been very, they, that's been very successful all across um, Africa. You know, the, the schools have been very involved in bed net, the bed net programs. It's very important because mm -hmm. that saves lives. Mm -hmm. Now let's 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 move north on the continent. You're uh, you know you're in November. You'll be in the Congo. You're spending a lot of time there. Let's talk about um, the other country you're going to, which is Tunisia. Tunisia. What will your role be in Tunisia? I'm going as an election observer mm -hmm. to, in October to go to uh, go observe the elections in Tunisia. I'm kind of I'm very excited about that. And what is your uh, what is what do you anticipate will happen? Well, right now, hopefully the elections are going to come off. I just we just <laughs> got word that maybe they're not going to. So I don't know. Uh, the, uh, I'm going with the International Republican Institute as an international observer, so mm -hmm. I'm uh, just there to observe and report any corruption or mis-, mis So you'll be standing in a ballot box, you'll be watching to see whether ballot boxes are stuffed, you'll be talking to people right. on the street. Right, or seeing if they they're, if they're, if they, uh, moving any troops around to vote or you know, police around to vote or just what's going on, and or you, intimidating anybody. And you've done that before in many countries where you've been. And what have you seen? Tell me something oh, I've seen about them, it. I've seen them bust the police around, the army around. I've seen them close ballot boxes to people, or ballot polling stations to people come, coming around. I've been invited in by the guys in Russia to come back and have some vodka. You know, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've, seen, I've had, seen it all. <laughs> it's uh, kind of fun. <laughs> And what can, uh, what, can the, what can the people in this room do about I also, elections? Is I, I, just on a side note, I also was invited in in Russia by a MiG pilot who had flown against my husband in Vietnam. That was, the, that was a really weird one. <laughs> <laughs> how did, I knew how did that husband. work out? It was weird. I don't know. I, I, really. I, I, it, was, it was very funny. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and how elections, this seems like the sort of thing that technologists can help, you know, understand and follow. We know how to yeah. analyze ballots mathematically. We have you yeah. know, satellites. What should, what should the people in this room be thinking about with the Tunisian election and how we can help make sure it's free or other elections as they are carried out in, uh, in Africa? Uh, the same thing. I mean, reporting, uh, I don't know who's, you know, how many are on the ground or what's going on, but the most important thing that we can do is to report whether it is free and fair. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with the, with the Arab Spring being you know what is going on. I mean, our job is—I mean, your job is, as uh, as reporters is to be is to reporting the at the absolute truth as to what's going on. Have you seen a clearly unfree and unfair election? And what did you do about I've it? I've never seen a free and fair election around the world. No. You've never seen a free, or you've never seen a. I mean, the ones that I've been sent to, the ones. I mean, I, I've seen the Mexican elections, I've seen the Russian elections, and I've never seen one that was that was free and fair. No. And then, so what do you what do you do in those contexts? You bring back reports. You bring mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. You hope things change. Yeah, you just just report it. I mean, it's a, it's our job is is strictly to report, mm -hmm. not to judge. Okay. Now, speaking of free and fair elections, let's uh, let's talk for a minute about the election right now. We have we have no reporters in the Congo. Mm -hmm. uh, we had many. We have many reporters yeah. trying to figure out whether Mitt Romney spells ketchup on a suit. Um, tell me about your view about how presidential elections are covered and how it should change. You've been through one. I, I, you know, the 24-hour the news cycle, I think, changed everything. That I, that's the understatement of the year. That's probably an oxymoron. But um, in my opinion, I think it, to some degree it dumbed down the news mm -hmm. a great deal because I witnessed in the back of the airplane reporters interviewing reporters. I, you know, the unnamed source, well, okay. Um, I think <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, uh, it, it, I don't know, I don't know where this goes. I don't know how you, how you fix that or if you fix it. I don't know how this, what, what happens to it. I do think that it, at some point this will seek its level. I think it becomes a responsibility of a, organizations like Google and others perhaps to weed this out and mm -hmm. thin it out somehow. Um, I, I, what do you mean by that? I, I, I think at some point we have to be able to, to you know, because I, I heard today somebody talking about, well, you know, people, people get, you know, somebody was angry in the White House and so it was the unnamed sources, we're talking about the unnamed, unnamed sources and all of this. And I, again, I think that was people interviewing people again, the reporters interviewing reporters kind of thing. I don't know how you, you know, having been just a witness to it, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how we, from a from the candidate standpoints, I don't know how you, how you, I don't know if it's fixable, mm -hmm. and I it 
it, it makes for a, a, it makes for a very interesting ability to be able to get your message out. Now, the flip side of that is I watched the debate, and I also saw the candidates doing the minute by minute press release on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That's I mean that's all we didn't have that. I mean we didn't have the ability to, to even spin it that fast. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> I, I I don't know where this goes. I mean this is a very it's a it's it makes for a very interesting. And is it the, the negative changes that you see? Is it the fault of technology, or is it um, well, something else that's it's changed? It's certainly in the result of technology, mm -hmm. and society is changing. I don't know. I think maybe it's going it, to. Yeah, I think it's maybe going to uh, fry people a little bit. I mm -hmm. think people are going to lose interest. I, I think it's too much. I think people are going to. I mean, it's. I don't think people can filter that much. In, and, I mean, I know I can't. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm getting old, I don't know, but I, I know I can't filter that. So are you pleased that the next uh, presidential election you'll be involved in is the Congo? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Yes, I am. I'm glad I'm at home. I can watch it on TV now. Yeah, this one, uh, I really am. I, I enjoyed that race very much. I, 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 I'm glad I could look back and smile upon it. And uh, I thought my husband did a great job, but I'm glad I'm not involved. And you can tweet your thoughts on the next <laughs> one. Yes, I can. All right. Thank, thank, you very, you. thank you very much, Thanks. Cindy Humphrey-McKinney.